back to Primitive Organic Garden today. It's probably been a few days since I did a uh, proper garden update. Been kind of busy, sick for a bit. It's been 90 to 100 degrees every day. Um, but it's 80 out here this morning. Nice breeze, some cloud cover. So I figured I could get some work done and uh, might as well film something before uh, it gets too hot. Um, look at this cool peppermint chard. It's one of my favorites. Um, so I cleaned up the front yard the last week or so. There's no more crimson clover, unfortunately. Um, we'll just do a quick tour. I don't want the dogs to get out, so I'll show you all the stuff on the side yard later. But uh, this is still hanging on here. The leeks have all gone to flower, and unlike onions and garlic, these leek stems are like way too woody to be eating. Flowers are pretty though. Um, I'm probably just gonna let them flower so that I have leek seed and then I'll cut them back and leeks usually like sprout secondary little clonal things from the roots. Um, tomatoes looking pretty good. Purple eggplant, some more leeks back there, another tomato. Look at this volunteer potato coming up in the wood chip mulch. And uh, I won't be surprised if I get more potatoes out of this than I do any of the ones I actually planted. Nice little pepper there. <clears throat> I still got like six or eight of these trays on the front porch that have tomatoes and peppers and eggplant in them. Got some flowers I need to transplant too. This little dill hanging on, but I've noticed the quality of dill leaves goes way down when the temperatures are in the 90s. Uh, here's a nice big tomato. Tomatoes have been largely disappointing this year. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Um, potato plants, getting close to time to harvest. I've harvested maybe five or six potato plants over here and probably a dozen at my fruit orchard. And uh, potatoes have tasted great. Yields haven't been fantastic, but it's so variable. I had uh, potatoes in the potato box over at the orchard, and all the plants look identical from above ground. But when I go to harvest them, some have like three potatoes and some have 13, um, even though they have the exact same amount of above ground growth. So that's kind of interesting. A lot of the dill has gone to seed. Um, this little lemon tree is actually putting on lemons for its first time. This is a dwarf lemon. Um, this is not a bush though, this is an actual tree. I have a lot of Meyer lemons that are dwarf bushes. This one is a small tree, apparently, according to the label. It's from the nursery. <coughs> you can tell I'm still a little sick. Uh, Zinnia jumped up in here the other day and was digging, and I got really upset with her. She dug up and exposed the roots. Maybe there was something living down there. Um, I might try to make my own onion sets for the fall. I got some onions I forgot to plant, didn't have time to plant. I might cut them back, save the bulbs, and re-sprout them in fall. I haven't really picked any of this chart. I need to. Uh, the greenhouse is kind of a big mess now. Um, I decided to just leave this up for the summer because it's so much work to build one of these things. I'm just gonna come in here with a weed whacker around October or something maybe. It's really shady in there now. Um, I cut down most of the rye. I think it's gonna look a lot different than the last time y'all saw the garden, a little pepper plant. I mean, there was, you can still see there's some that I kind of missed, but all the rye was four or five feet tall going to seed. And so I chopped down most of it um, mostly just kind of a crimping method. I just came by and broke the stems and I've been treading on them. So the pathways will be weed free this summer, hopefully, because there's going to be this thick mat of rye. Um, the zucchinis have been by far the most productive thing this spring. I've probably picked 30 zucchinis already. Uh, this is the zucchini patch. 
came in here and cleaned out most of this yesterday, but each plant is producing a couple a day, and there's a few big ones back here that I haven't gotten yet. I try not to get them, let them get too big, but there's a nice big one back there. A little one. But yeah, I've probably picked like 40 or so, and I don't think these plants are going to slow down anytime soon. They are powdery mildew resistant. Um, so yeah, we'll see how many I get. be interesting. The patty pans don't seem to be quite as productive as the F1 hybrid zooks, but I've been picking quite a few patty pans as well. Um, yeah, let's finish our tour before I start rambling. Uh, there were some potatoes in here I harvested. There's volunteer green beans. Um, it's a little late in the year for green beans, but they don't make uh, pods now. They'll uh, make pods in the fall when the temperatures cool down. Um, a lot of these carrots went to flower, which I guess is fine. Um, I ate plenty of carrots this year, and the raccoon ate plenty of carrots. I'm going to come in here today with a machete and clean a lot of this up. Um, there's definitely garlic plants in here that I want to keep, but you can see there's a ton of clover that's in this raised bed, a bunch of coriander, four foot tall blue kale plant. A lot of this needs to go to make room for other summer crops. Um, onions need to be harvested. I don't know how much bigger these will get if I just leave them. I'd kind of like to have some like softball sized onions. But, uh, again, I need this space for other stuff. And you can see there's, like, volunteer tomatoes coming up in here that are not doing so well because they're completely shaded out by everything else. Um, the comfrey has got to go. It's taking over this raised bed. But this one cherry tomato is holding its own. Somebody told me that comfrey, uh, even though it's an incredibly, like, vigorous plant, Sometimes it'll share space with shallow rooted plants because apparently the comfrey just wants to make like a deep taproot or something. I don't know if that's true, but I mean, this tomato seems to be doing all right next to the comfrey. Um, these are my green beans I've been working on. So I got two varieties that I crossed a couple years ago, and I also have their uh, offspring in here. It's hard to see what's what right now, but. On the left was, uh, I think, greasy cornfield pole beans, and on the right was Seychelles, and in the middle is the one that I made between those two. Um, we'll be able to tell when they start putting on pods, probably. But, uh, yeah, I mean, one of these has made it almost all the way up that bamboo. I don't know if it'll get to the top of the oak tree or not. This oregano is doing really good, and... This was just a little cutting from the one on the porch. I ate a lot of blackberries this year. Um, I don't know, the blackberries are starting to get like an off flavor to them. I don't know if they're overripe or what. I thought they just got sweeter and sweeter, but last week they tasted really good. And this week some of them have kind of a weird bitter taste but uh definitely eating a lot of them all oh, this is blackberry now come out here in the fall with a weed whacker and whack them all down to the ground and then they uh come back as like bushes in the spring with way more berries on them some of the wildflowers are starting to bloom um I said tomatoes have been really disappointing this year. I actually planted a lot. And a lot of them are big plants, but the fruit set has been really low. A lot of the fruits have been damaged. Um, all kinds of weird problems. I don't know what this is. This isn't blossom end, it's some other weird rot. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of good things to say about the tomatoes this year. Well, look at you, the first hornworm of the year. Wow, you're a big boy. How'd I miss you yesterday? 
probably because it was hot and you were hiding. So hornworms, they can get this big pretty quick, but this one's definitely been on this plant a couple of days. Um, but in the heat of the day, they hide down toward the bottom of the plant, and then in the evenings and at night and early in the morning, they crawl up to the top of the plants. You can see he destroyed all this leaf tissue yesterday. Um, surprised the birds didn't get this guy, to be honest. I got a ton of birds back here. But uh, it's a shame I don't have chickens because uh, I would feed them to the chickens. But um, anyway, it's just compost now. But you know where there's one, there's more, um, usually. I don't get a lot of pest issues, to be honest, because I do such a good job of encouraging beneficials. Um, but there's another one right there. Um, big fat boy. Look at that big fat boy. It's a shame you can't use this as like fishing bait or anything. I think uh, they're just way too bitter and nasty and probably toxic from all the uh, alkaloids they're sequestering from tomato. I don't know if a fish would even enjoy eating something like that, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's rot on the bottom of these tomatoes, too, so it's interesting. There's no bacterial issues on these leaves. The ones I have in full sun got eaten up by, I think, bacterial canker. The leaves are all spotty. He's over here in the shade. Didn't really have any leaf diseases, but some of the fruits are having some rot on the end. Um, now I need to be out here looking for hornworms instead of filming this video, huh? I haven't seen any hawk moths flying around, but clearly there were some, because we just saw two big old hornworms. Um, I won't bore y'all with hornworm hunting, so... Um, I'll film the rest of this video real quick and then look for hornworms. All this lettuce needs to go to make room for other stuff. It is in the medicinal stage now. They call flowering lettuce, lettuce opium. You can suck the sap out of these stems and it's a mild sedative, but I really uh, just need to clean that up so I can plant some other stuff. Uh, all this mustard is ready to harvest seed from. Some massive, vigorous mustard plants back there. Tomatillo crop is coming in. Uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty good crop. This was a new variety I got from a seed company up in Asheville. It's a purple variety of tomatillo. I started a 50 cell tray. I think I got like 40 good plants. Out of the 40, I planted probably 25, 30 of them. And, uh, most of them are back here, there's some in the front yard. And they seem like they're gonna be pretty well loaded with fruits. Um, tomatillos are a kick-ass plant in my opinion. They uh, don't mind 100 degree weather, which is cool. Um, we need to harvest the rest of these carrots before the raccoon does. Uh, this is probably gonna be okra. Get all this ryegrass out of here and harvest the rest of those carrots and probably plant okra. Now is the time to plant okra. I probably could have done it a couple weeks ago. Um, you can see where the raccoon's been in here. It just tears stuff up. Flattened a bunch of this garlic by trampling all over it. Um, probably trying to get to these carrots. It doesn't seem to like the carrots as much now that they're getting woody. Um, it damaged this tomato plant. This is one of those like indigo berry types that are beautiful but don't taste particularly good. I'd be surprised if I ever saw a hornworm on one of these plants. But uh, yeah, you can see there's, there's not a whole lot of weeds in here. It's just things from winter that are now too big that need to get chopped down. Ugh. I need to have my coffee. I'm all congested and not very motivated. I came out here like first thing this morning before I even made coffee. Um, yeah, you can see the raccoon. It's been digging in here too, getting these last few carrots. 
Uh, this is an eggplant from last year. I don't know what in the world is wrong with these fruits. Nasty. Just eaten up with something. Every one of them has been like that. This was that eggplant that I suspect was a reservoir for some virus that ended up infecting some of the tomatoes early season. Um, the eggplant's never shown symptoms itself, but I think it infected two habaneros, a couple of tomatoes, and all of its fruits this year have had spots on them. But, uh, like I said, I saved this from last year. That was probably a really bad idea. Even if you're, uh, able to overwinter annuals, it doesn't mean you necessarily should. These were the tomatoes that were in full sun that got eaten up by bacterial canker on the leaves. I didn't water these yesterday because I was trying to get the fruits to ripen up a little faster. Looks like there's been some hornworm activity over here too. Interesting. I don't really care about these plants because, like I said, they've been eaten up by canker. I'm going to get some tomatoes off of them and then I'm just going to chop them down because I hate these things. Oh, here you are. Um, these have been requiring watering like almost twice a day, every day. Maybe it's because they're only in five gallon buckets, maybe it's because they're in full sun. But honestly, these have been a headache and they've been more trouble than they're worth. Um, I put a lot of work into these. These were brand new buckets. I put nice potting mix in them. Um, they're sitting on plywood. Mulched, put up this nice bamboo trellis for them. Some of them, you know, made decent yields. This one I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven nice tomatoes off of, but I'm not sure it was worth the effort. Um, these are a little cooler looking. Uh, the bacterial canker must have come from the seed pack. I didn't soak the seeds in the bleach or anything. Um, but yeah, brand new buckets, brand new potting mix, so they didn't get canker from the potting mix. It was probably uh, the seed pack. But um, anyway, I'm actually kind of glad these are almost done. I mean, you know, if I harvest all these fruits off of them and prune them way back, it's possible that I might get another crop out of them, but... Like I said, they've just been a headache with twice a day water in and bacterial canker. So I think I'm just gonna pull the last fruits off and call it. Um, I was real excited about this one over here in the shade. It was doing great. And now it's needing a lot of water too, even though it's in the shade. It's got some fruits on it. We'll see what they do. Sunchokes are coming back really uh, vigorously this year. This incredibly dry weather we've had has been great for the sun chokes. You can see how big those are, how big those are over here. Uh, best strawberry crop I've had in years because of the exceptionally dry spring. Ha! <laughs> Look at this random volunteer sweet potato. Man, I tell you, you plant sweet potatoes once, you'll never get rid of them. I didn't even plant them. I had one I threw in a compost pile like two years ago, and now I got sweet potatoes popping up everywhere. I think they must have gone to seed at some point and then some of the seeds sprouted because I only tossed one sweet potato into the compost pile and it was just a standard grocery store brown skin orange flesh and last year I harvested two different types of sweet potatoes neither of which looked much at all like the one I tossed in the compost pile so they must have gone to seed at some point um, speaking of potatoes going to seed these potatoes are not sweet potatoes obviously but um, I'm really hoping to get some seed off some actual potatoes this year, but a lot of them, the flowers tend to just drop, and then you get these little stem things, flower stems with no seeds, no berries on them. Um, but I'd like to start doing some potato breeding, so if I find a few fruits on some of these potatoes, I'll be really happy. I've heard it's hard to get potato seeds out of the fruit, and they're hard to process and hard to germinate, but it'd be really cool to start selecting for heat tolerant potatoes uh, these I did not plant the squirrels planted these probably um, we'll see how they do
a little bit of ryegrass around here. I still need to chop down another random volunteer sweet potato plant. This was that tomato that got nearly killed by frost. It's come back a little bit now. Um, it's one of those like micro tom varieties, I think. A bunch of tiny little cherries. Uh, pretty disappointed in this flower box. I'm not really sure what happened. <clears throat> Everything sprouted and nothing wanted to grow more than like two or three inches. Corn's almost ready to harvest. Oh, let's look at this brandywine yellow tomato. So I was pretty excited about all the brandywine yellows. That was my big tomato investment this year. I got a bunch of seed for that and planted like 200 of the plants in trays. Never ended up transplanting them all and I'm kind of glad I didn't now. The brandywine yellows, it's a potato leaf variety. They're pretty vigorous early in the season when the temperatures are cool. Um, don't need a ton of water. But as it got hot, the plants just stopped producing new leaves. And the fruit set was, like, miserably low. So yeah, this is a nice fat tomato here. This is going to be over a pound. But this plant has one tomato on it. It's like, are you joking? You got seven gallons of soil, nice fabric pot, good potting mix, nice fertilizer, and you make one fruit. Um, and so it's just a shit variety in my opinion. Like every single one of the brandywine yellows in the garden has done that. Um, so I'm just not going to grow that one again. Maybe they do fine in cooler climates. But um, yeah, it was just really disappointing. Uh, but there's a couple other random ones in the garden that aren't brandywine yellow. Um, not sure why these leaves are curling. This tomato has been really thirsty for some reason too. Um, I know the fabric pots keep them a little drier, but this one's another one that's needed insane amounts of watering. Uh, maybe it has some disease or something, but there's not really any symptoms on the leaves. But <laughs> Yeah, tomatoes have largely been disappointing this year. But I got those, uh brand new for 2021 honeycomb hybrid orange slash peach colored cherries that I haven't planted out yet. They're in a cell tray in the front yard and they're about six inches tall now. Um, I think I'm going to get a really nice fall crop out of those. It's an F1 hybrid variety unlike most of these that are heirlooms. They're also a brand new 2021 variety. They're a cherry type so they're probably going to be more vigorous and heat tolerant and uh i'll do a good job of staking them and all that those were expensive it's like four bucks and i think i got 15 seeds and 12 of them sprouted but they're going to be really pretty hopefully they taste good some sun chokes popping up in this onion bed um i'm supposed to be looking at corn oh yeah i still have some carrots to harvest i really just need to pull these up because with the 90 degree temperatures they're going to be wood um i pulled up all the carrots that were in here but i still have a couple more pots to pull up. Um, I'm gonna have to cook all of these. Wow, oh, something chewed on that one. Cause I don't know. I mean, mom's been eating some of them raw, but I feel like once you get into 90 degree temperatures, the quality of the carrot root just goes way down. Wow, something really has been eating these. It looks like it's from underneath the soil, though. Um, I know carrots are really cheap to grow at the store, so it's not an ideal thing to grow in your garden if you have a lot of garden space. But I grow them more as a cover crop in the winter than anything else because seed is relatively cheap and the seed is large. And so I can just go out and like throw seed by hand and scatter seed everywhere and it keeps some of the winter weeds down and then you do eventually get a crop out of it but um wow these look better in this other pot the ones that were getting more sun wow there's a nice one look at all this fish and bait
But yeah, I mean, if I was struggling for space in terms of the garden, I don't think I would plant carrots because they are relatively cheap at the store. But I'm to the point now where I don't buy any produce at the store whatsoever um, other than ginger root. And I've tried to grow that too. It's just, it's a long season crop. Um, but I'm not really growing any produce. So if I do want to eat some carrots, I feel like I do need to grow them. But um, yeah, like I said, the seed is really, really cheap. So I usually just get like the Danvers type or the little finger whatever untreated seed I can find for cheap and I get like a bulk pack of it and uh, that's quite a lot of carrots there oh look there's more to harvest yay we need to chop down some of this rye we're supposed to be looking at the corn aren't we um, so this corn will be ready pretty soon you can see the silks are starting to turn brown the corn's getting fairly plump uh -oh, this video is getting over 25 minutes. I have trouble uploading anything more than about 20 minutes. YouTube gives me issues with it. Um, but yeah, I'll come in here and uh, look at this rye that's just on top of the tarp. It's so ridiculous. This tarp was supposed to be like an ASD trial this summer. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny to just see ryegrass with like no soil growing on top of a tarp but cucumbers are looking good these look like bush types uh, these are all white cucumbers variety I've never grown before but I'm excited for them um, they'll make interesting looking pickles I got three plants here I gave away the fourth one I had yesterday to somebody who will probably just let it die uh, look at these pretty zinnias where's zinnia zinnia <whistles> zinnia you want to come say hi zinnia <whistles> zinnia i guess not zinnia come say hi baby hey dogs hey farm dogs Zinnia, come say hi, baby. There's big dog. Zinnia. Zinnia. You want to come see your flowers? Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Bee, 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 bee. Come here. Hey. Your flowers are blooming. Your flowers are blooming. Aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty? See, yes, they're pretty. That's what you're named after. Yeah. It's funny, sometimes people in the neighborhood hear me screaming at Zinnia. Zinnia, get out of the onions. Zinnia, stop breaking the peppers. And they probably think I'm a crazy person yelling at flowers. But, um, yeah, these are in the clay pot tower, and these have to be watered every single day, unfortunately. Clay pots always dry out faster than anything else, and because they're stacked vertically, they dry out even faster, but they're looking pretty. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it for today's update. I'll show you the front yard and the side yard in another video. Um, there's some more zinnias over here. Another clay pot tower. There's some eggplants. These are all the purple Italian Rosa Biancas. Another clay pot tower. But um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the main things we're looking at today pretty excited to have corn in a couple days um, that carrot harvest was pretty decent all right well thanks for tuning in sorry this was so long